I think we are in an overall rising trend, but that doesn't mean there won't be dips. I see today as a dip, and probably driven by the size of the sell-off, where some of the traders would worry about future growth. But underneath it all, and I come from an operating perspective rather than a trading perspective, but underneath of it all, there's a four-year gap in spending capital on the industry to replace reserves or to grow reserves. And we know that in the shale formations in particular, there's a rapid decline in, in what oil we produce. So I'm a bit worried, given that four-year history, of how we maintain growth and meet demand in the coming years. So I'm, I'm on the side of rising prices over the next, say, year, year and a half, where, where, where as some people are saying, we could touch 100. Uh, I'm not sure I'm there yet, but I'm certainly in the 80 range and, and above. So I think today is a dip. We shouldn't read too much into it. And where are you on what kind of economic impact that would have, John? There's sort of a debate about, obviously, it's not good for the consumer paying higher gas prices. But as Kevin Hassett from the White House told Squawk Box this morning, it doesn't have that kind of a negative effect on our economy anymore because we're such a big oil producer. Well, except from the consumer's pocketbook standpoint, it does. If we get much above $3.50 per gallon of gasoline, uh, or if we get up into that range for diesel, people are going to start to push back and we're going to start to see some demand destruction. Where we really see the demand destruction is when it hits the $4 range. That's when consumers and that's when freight moving companies tack on surcharges, all the prices go up. Suddenly, you know, the consumer is, is really in a twist. From an EP standpoint and the expiration and production standpoint, the, the comment from the White House is absolutely correct. The rising price is actually fueling more investment, fueling more growth, and with the shale formations and so forth. But I would look at it not only the upstream portion of the business, but also the downstream portion of the business. And they kind of come together when, it, when you're looking at the macro numbers of how much growth and demand there is or how much destruction of demand there is. And it all plays out ultimately in the oil price. John, in, in terms of, uh, we were talking to Kevin O'Leary earlier, who said uh, now's the time to own dividend-paying stocks. Uh, are you com confident that those big dividends, the yields, are sustainable for the likes of Exxon, Chevron, or your former employers, uh, Shell, over in Europe and BP, where, in fact, the yields are even higher still? Yes, and I can tell you from an industry perspective, when it comes to dividend policy, there's always a multi-year outlook on dividend policy and it's always looked at in terms of low price, medium price, high price scenarios so that no company is going to commit itself because it is a dividend driven kind of investment marketplace. No company is going to commit itself to a dividend policy where in the next year or year and a half they might have to relook at it. They'd rather have a consistent, steady dividend policy because they're attracting shareholders that are more in it for the long term. This industry is not for day traders. It is not for the short-term minded individual because the projects are long-term, the investments are long-term, both in the upstream and the downstream. So it's very important for investors to really lock in and go for a dividend policy they like. And if there's share appreciation on top of that, that's all to the good.